In this video, we're going to show you to replace the passenger side catalytic converter on your Dodge Ram located on the passenger side of your engine. Using our 7-8 socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove our lug nuts. With the lug nuts removed, let's go ahead and remove that wheel and set it aside. We want to go ahead and use our eight millimeter socket to go ahead and remove the eight millimeter screws securing our fender flare to this vehicle. Your vehicle may not have these fender flares. If you don't, you might have a series of smaller screws going through the fender and into the wheel well liner. Remove all of those. On the back side right here, you're going to notice a little plastic push pin. Go ahead and use a trim tool, reach around the back side, twist that out. That is simply securing the ABS wire junction right there. On the inside of the wheel well liner, you're going to find a series of eight millimeter screws. Loosen and remove all of those. Once you have your screws out, you can go ahead and grab that wheel aligner and gently work that out from the fender. Go ahead and set that aside. And then go ahead and use our 15 millimeter ratchet, a pair of locking pliers, hold that nut on the other side. Go ahead and remove that bolt, set that aside. We're now gonna use our 15 millimeter socket on our electric impact, reach around the other side, loosen and remove that bolt. Get remove that bolt on the other side. Using a 22 millimeter wrench, go ahead and loosen the upstream O2 sensor. Using your 22 millimeter wrench, go ahead, loosen and remove the downstream O2 sensor that is behind the passenger side catalytic converter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some rust penetrant inside these threads here. We did apply some heat on this to try and get it to break free. And basically what I do is Go up a little bit of threads and turn back and just work it back and forth to get that out. You want to remove this clamp here. It probably was a 9 16 You want to go ahead and use whatever size socket you need to go ahead and remove this here. In our case, we're simply going to cut this off because, well, we can't identify what this is. We're gonna to have to source a new clamp. Now where the passenger pipe comes over in the cross over here, it joins right here to the driver's side on this flange. Now our component here is rusted beyond identification. There's just a rusty nub you can see here. We're just going to cut this off on yours. Just use whatever nut, uh, whatever socket and wrench you need to remove that. Now 
right here where our flange pipe is, where it joins to the driver's side, it's in really bad shape. It's almost rusted and fused to it. This point here, I'm gonna cut further back. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have this separated, I'm gonna use my cutting wheel and I'm gonna slit this pipe and peel this off of the driver's side exhaust. Now that this is split, you can go ahead and remove this piece of pipe. Go ahead and toss that out. Now in the middle of your transmission mount cross member right here, there are two 15 millimeter nuts going to that transmission mount. Let's go ahead, loosen and remove those. We're going to go ahead and use our pole jack with a block of wood just to support the transfer case in the tail end of the transmission. That way there, when we unbolt this cross member here, the tail section of the transmission and transfer case will be supported. Use our 18 millimeter socket on the bolt side, 18 millimeter wrench on the other side. Loosen and remove this bolt here as well as one beside it. We're going to repeat that for the driver's side. Now, if you're removing your bolts at home and your vehicle is not rusty, be careful because this bracket can fall down. Ours is pretty rusty. It's kind of stuck up in position. We just need to give that a few bonks to loosen it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and persuade this bracket with our pry bar to try and get that free. Now at this point here, you want to go ahead and go ahead and grab your pipe and your cat unit. We're going to twist this pipe back and forth and work it out of the middle pipe here. Once it's all set, we're going to go ahead and put that on the floor. What you want to do is go ahead and join together our mid pipe here, slip this together onto the driver's side, as well as insert the back tailpipe section into the pipe in front of the muffler. Once you get these installed, go ahead and put your clamps on and tighten those down. You want to go ahead and install your clamps. Once 
Once you get that on like that, go ahead and repeat for the tailpipe clamp area. Now, before we tighten these down, let's go ahead and bolt up the cat to the exhaust manifold. Now let's go ahead and install our stud and nut here. We did run our stud through the wire wheel machine to clean up the threads. I'm gonna go ahead and get that threaded, several threads here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat for the back side of the flange. Using my 15 millimeter wrench on the nut side and 15 millimeter socket, you wanna go ahead and tighten down our hardware. Now we're gonna do this evenly on both sides. We wanna over tighten one side and leave the side, leave the other side loose. So you just wanna go back and forth. You wanna make sure that it's nice and snug on both sides. So you line up your cross member here. And once you get these holes lined up, go ahead and install your bolts. get the nuts installed on all four of these and then we'll go ahead and just tighten those down. Use our 18 millimeter socket and wrench. And we'll just tighten those up. Install the transmission mount nuts. I'm gonna get these both started by hand first. Once you have those started, just go ahead and zip those down and make sure they're tight. Again, torque down our cross member nuts here. We're gonna come on to the back side here with our 18 millimeter and torque these down to 75 foot pounds. With our cross member installed, we can now go ahead and remove our jack. And go ahead and set that aside. I went ahead and put some anti-seize compound on the threads here to help it go into the pipe a little bit better. Also turning this counterclockwise, winding up the wires here just, just enough where when we thread this in clockwise, it'll unwind the wires and be nice and relaxed. I wanna go ahead and get that started. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. Use your 22 millimeter wrench. Now, if you have high mileage on your vehicle, now is a prime time to go ahead and put new ones in. Now once that gets snug, I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little bit more. You wanna make sure that it is in there nice and tight. Check your wires, make sure they're not all bound up. And go ahead, install the upstream sensor. Go ahead and do the same for this sensor here.
Now, if you're installing new O2 sensors, you'll feel the crush washer bottom out. You want to go ahead and continue to compress that until you feel the sensor stop tightening down and make sure it's pretty tight. You want to go ahead and tighten this down evenly. Once you're all set with this here, you want to go ahead and hop in the vehicle, start it up, check for any exhaust leaks. If you do hear an exhaust leak, come back and double check all of your clamps, tighten everything down appropriately. install the liner. What you want to do is go ahead and start probably one of the upper screws in. This will hold the liner in place while we go ahead and install the rest of the screws. Now we're not going to tighten that down. We want to make sure we get all of our other screws in first and then we'll come back and tighten them all down together. Continue to do this all the way around the edges. Now that we have all of our screws installed, let's go back and snug them all down. Once you have all your fender liner screws in, go ahead and take your ABS connector and that little button will come through the back side right here. lock that in. Now if your vehicle has the fender flares on it, go ahead and line that up. And start installing your screws. Now we've got a majority of our screws in here. Go ahead and finish putting the rest of your screws and snug those down. Go ahead and grab that wheel. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. Get all of our lug nuts started by hand. Once we have all these on, we're gonna go ahead and snug them down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 135 foot-pounds.
when only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.